Hello and welcome to another update. I'm not too sure if this is going to be a regular thing, but I do have some news about Herman, which we'll cover towards the end of the video. In the last update, I did mention that I was made redundant and I asked you guys whether or not you had anything, any ideas that I could do while I've got all this time on my hands. And I've had a huge response. So whoever you are, thank you very much for replying and give me some ideas. A couple of the ideas uh, were about not being too diverse. And this was, to me, a kind of a reminder that, you know, we are a motorhome channel and it's probably a, a good idea not to get too sidetracked with other videos such as making or uh, fixing my car or uh, doing the decorations or you know I think you get the idea so not not to be too diverse because simply put you simply you guys are here to watch Zoe myself and Herman go out on our ventures and all the good times and that bad times that we've ever had so it doesn't make sense to go and do some stuff that you probably have not been here to see over the last few weeks in fact probably in the last two months I have been contacted by companies via email probably more times than usual actually uh, and what they're after is a collaboration with them and what that means is that they send us their products for review and we make a video reviewing it and put it out on YouTube. Now the thing is uh, a lot of the products that they they want us to review uh, kind of don't fit the channel. Now just see what the comment I just mentioned earlier about the being, di being too diverse. Now but the thing is, I want to see what your opinions of these products are, whether or not you guys are interested in seeing these products because you might find them interesting. So I'll list out some of the products and uh, let me know what you think. Footwear. I've got a company who do shoes and hiking boots aimed at reducing pain and improve comfort. Now, this might be a good one for me because I do have knee pain and back pain sometimes, not all the time. A portable... FM radios. Now this is the weird one because we have DAB radios now. I'm not too sure whether or not FM radios are the kind of thing that people want to buy anymore. We also have smart speakers and Spotify. You're getting music from your phone and having a smart speaker outside running on batteries, you know. Uh, do we need uh, FM radios anymore? Now the next item is probably more focused on motorhomes than any of the other products in this list and that is Connect Plus which is a mobile internet service. Now this might fit us very well because we do want to do more traveling and I've just cancelled our broadband service provider so we don't in the next month we're not going to have any broadband or TV or anything like that. So this could be a good thing for us. It looked a bit expensive, mind, but it is global. So you could travel all around the world and still have internet connection. Then we have a company who wants to send us a battery charger, a big battery charger that does different types of batteries and a jump starter. Uh, and then we have a, a, a few companies who want to send us dash cams, but I think they are for cars rather than for motorhomes. So they won't have a rear camera, for instance. I don't know, I haven't actually looked into too much detail. And then finally, earplugs. What do you like with earplugs? These, <laughs> this, uh, this company wants to send us these earplugs. They're malleable, so they're soft, uh, and therefore supposedly comfortable, uh, with the idea that you use them while you're sleeping, so you don't get, you know, if your partner is snoring, you don't get them, you know, the noise here, you don't hear them snoring. Oh, blimey. Uh, but also, you probably don't hear the fire alarm going off. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> so what I'll do, I'll create a survey, and I'll put a link to the survey in the video description. You can click on that and choose what you're interested in. But if you don't want to, can't be bothered to do that, then, yeah, you can also put uh, drop us a comment. Now, next week is the Camping, Caravanning and Motorhome Show, and I am going... 
Zoe's not going, unfortunately. I'm going on the 22nd of February with Chaz. You know who Chaz is. I think everybody must know Chaz. He's, 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 on, the, he's on the YouTube channels. He's, he's probably on his fourth or fifth YouTube channel now. Even Bob Earnshaw is even in his videos. Incredible, he gets around. Uh, and uh, also we're going with Alex from TTEXLA, where Chaz also appears in. And Gary, you may know Gary from our previous videos when we were in Fishguard at Christmas and New Year. Now, the things I look for in, a, in motorhomes when I go to these shows are innovation. The problem is, well, it's not really a problem, but when you, when you see a motorhome, it's probably just an upgrade of last year's. And they all seem to have the same design, the same materials, same layouts. So I like to see new things, things where the, where the manufacturers are kind of thinking out of the box, that kind of thing. Um, I'm most interested in seeing Burstner's group of motorhomes because they have a new motorhome coming out this year. Uh, it's on their website for £100,000, so it's quite expensive. But the, the roof on this uh, seven, six metre motorhome the roof elevates, which is fantastic. It elevates with uh, walls of air on the air cushion. And you may have seen it also, this, this, this uh, roof on Heimer and a, and a Heimer concept a few years ago, where they put it on one of their four by four camper vans, which is a yeah, concept vehicle or something. So I'm really interested in seeing that. Don't know if they're there. Don't know who's going to be going. I haven't looked at the brochure yet. So you know so just fingers crossed that they're there or some sort of anything really anything that's innovative such as electric camper vans i would really like to start seeing electric camper vans at the nec show i was looking around last year i didn't see any but i do know one manufacturer has created a, uh, a electric fully electric no gas no fuel camper van Okay, so it's a, it's a small, one of these micro campers, I do believe, but it is at least a camper van. And of course, you, you have the ID Buzz by VW. So that's, I think that's out now, isn't it? But it's not in a camper van form. It's more in a case of a commercial or a, a passenger vehicle van. So I would love to see those. But um, if you have any suggestions that what you think we should go and see, maybe you know what's going to be there and uh, or, or you know of some motorhome that's going to be released at the show let us know and we'll go and seek it out and see what it's like and video our experience in it in the last update video i asked you guys to send me in some stories and photographs of your motorhome that you've got now or in that you've had in the past or oh, it could be a caravan or a camper van now i wasn't disappointed i've received some stories and some photographs and I'm going to read one out for you today it's by Barry or Baz and Shaz and uh, their story goes like this we bought our 2003 Heimer B564 called Bumble a year before we retired I retired as a police officer on a Monday sold the house on the Tuesday and moved into Bumble on a Wednesday the plan was Spain and then Croatia However, due to the restrictions of COVID and the uncertainty of a possible war in Ukraine and having spent most of my life traveling around the world, we thought we'd stay in the UK and Ireland. So began Bumble's year trip around the UK, which was magnificent. Scotland and the Hebrides were fantastic. However, the weather was crap, but not enough to worry us. Having spent over a year with Bumble going around the UK and looking at the possible trip south to Croatia, we started to become concerned with the ability to purchase another house. So as we traveled, we looked at property. If we had been younger and the children had been younger, we would have looked at moving up to Scotland, but the location was too far and too isolated from the children. Wales was the same. Cornwall was okay, but too many tourists who don't respect the location. So Devon was a spot with three and a half hours from the kids. By kids, I guess he means like they're 30 or 40 years old. I don't know. 
So we bought a converted barn and moved in just over after a year on the road. Now you must agree that the photographs that I've just shown you uh, are pretty amazing, pretty wonderful and they are all from Baza. Now if you want to see more of his photographs then he has a Facebook page called Baza Photography uh, and I'll leave a link in the video description so if you want to check that out you can in your own time. Now I don't know if you noticed but uh, well Bumble being a B564 that is exactly what Herman is although the years are different. Bumble is younger by a few years but Bumble doesn't have a ski locker unlike Herman. Herman's got that really long uh, locker at the back but Bumble doesn't so I wonder now we can't get access to that space from inside so I wonder what Bumble looks like inside. Very intrigued about that fascinating my mind's going oh if we could do that anyway uh, he continues we replaced the front and rear suspension prior to the trip the only failing we had in our 10,000 mile trip was a flat starter battery and near side half shaft seal the hardest thing was getting gearbox oil back in as you have to fill it from the top don't I know it the amount of times that myself and Chaz have had to take off the air filter and the get to the back of the the engine and the gearbox and t oh, it's a bit of a stretch and a bit uh, uh, difficult to get oil in the back in, in the gearbox. If you have a story and some photographs of your motorhome, old or new, doesn't matter, and you're happy to share them with everybody else on the uh, on this channel then please send your story and photographs and maybe even video to me in the, using the email in the video description and uh, it might get us showing in our next update. Now then, Herman update. Herman's news. So you may be aware that Herman for a while now has had a gearbox oil leak. In fact, I noticed it the first time when we were in Fishguard, when we were trying to go to Ireland, what's that, September, September, August, something like that, when we were trying to go to Ireland. Um, we also noticed this cl clunking sound when we are driving slowly, I mean, around campsites, that kind of thing, that kind of speed. And when you turn the wheel, you hear this go, 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 go. Uh, it's quite subtle and you don't really notice it, but it has been getting worse. It's been getting louder and more frequent. Um, the other day, well last weekend, we, myself and Chaz, went to Herman and checked the drive shaft. You may see the video to that pr uh, previously. You just, just give it a good shake and if it moves, that means something is not quite right. It basically means that the, uh, the, the some of the bearings have gone around the drive shaft, so they need replacing. Now, we phoned up a garage and they said, yeah, we can sort it out, give us a quote and they'll pick it up, pick up the motor home from our home. So we decided to drive from the storage to home and in that small time frame, 15 minutes, the clutch goes. Uh, smell, a, lots of burning smell uh, from the clutch, goes all the way through the motor home. In fact, 24 hours later, we could still smell it inside. It was awful. Um, and then the clutch itself, when I, I manoeuvred uh, Herman out and the clutch, my foot was almost off the, top, off the pedal before it actually got to the biting point, so it was on its way out. We had to order a flatbed truck to uh, take him to the garage in Ramsgate. And uh, when they got there, the guys contacted me and said that there's oil over the clutch, that which is why it was burning and smelling and the differential has gone so that must have mean that must be the uh, why the, the the drive shaft was moving so we need a clutch and we're going to change the clutch anyway because you know it, the gearbox has been disconnected from the engine you might as well otherwise you know save yourself a few pounds if you had to do it again uh, so clutch differential and the reconditioned gearbox all in two thousand pounds so oh, get a bit of burning here it's not it's not heartburn or chest pain or anything it's it's my wallet you know a bit of pain in the wallet so 
you know, 2,000 quid is a lot of money, especially when you ain't got a job. <laughs> but the good news is that they should be delivered Friday, which is tomorrow. Uh, actually, change of plan. It is now Friday and Herman has not arrived yet. I've been in contact with the garage and he's being worked on today. Uh, being available, hopefully for delivery on Monday, they said. A uh, bit fed up. Um, kind of wanted Herman back so we could at least start thinking about planning. I suppose it doesn't stop us, but to know that he's nice and safe, he's quite a distance away from us, to be quite honest. And um, he's been parked out on the street for the whole week. So I'm not happy. Anyway, I'll, uh, we'll update you when we get Herman and we'll have a little drive around and have a look around, see if he's still leaking. Fingers crossed he's not. And we'll uh, see how that clutch is now. So, thanks very much for watching. See you in the next one. Don't forget to do uh, send me some uh, stories and photographs and fill in the survey if you care to. Ta-da now. Bye-bye.